Hi there guys and welcome to a new Let's Play series of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. My name is Aiken and since the last run went to a very ungrateful end and I dirked it out and fell victim to an ancient lich and yeah it's time for something new and I'm gonna work through the uh, ideas I've got and write it. I mean the question was how to bring a merfolk gladiator through the early game without splatting him. Well, I completed that for sure, but still, I would have preferred to bring in a third one. My streak is broken and thus it's time for something new. And I'm working off this list I've got, and the next on the list is, is going to be a draconian transmuter, since that was something that was requested. I feel like that's going to be a lot of fun, transmuters are very nice to play, strong character, strong background of sorts, and off we go. We're playing as a draconian because I feel like that's a very nice beginner race to start off as a transmuter, and that has uh, a lot of different reasonings behind it. So let's start out with the basic facts of being a draconian. So we're having some scales which are providing us some AC bonus it's very useful and we're also unable to fit wear any kind of body armor with this sounds bad at the first glance but overall we're getting this AC plus four and this kind of like replaces our body armor this uh, scale bonus will scale upwards uh, when we gain more levels so we're basically lacking a body armor, but we're getting the benefits as if we were wearing one, so that's actually a good deal. Since we have armor class without having to level up armor and being encumbered by our armor and stuff like that, that's certainly very helpful if you're going for a hybrid spellcaster build. And that's why I think dra uh, Draconians are a very good pick for a transmuter. But we have also a downside, we're cold-blooded and maybe slowed by cold attacks. Uh, this applies a, a slow debuff every time we get hit by cold damage. And this can be negated at the point where I pick up some resistance to cold. As soon as I have one pip here, uh, this negative trait here will gray out and will not longer encumber us. So being a draconian means you really want to have some cold resistance at some point. Okay. Next thing on the list is, as soon as we're hitting XL7, we're gonna take a collar. And there are all manner of collars for Draconians, which have all their unique bonuses and breath attacks and everything. So let's check what we're gonna get. For our spell book, we start out with the Book of Changes, which is certainly a very useful spell if you uh, spell book if you have it from the beginning. We're having first off the Beastly Appendage, which yeah, it gives an, gives us just the Beastly. Uh, uh, some extra attack, auxiliary attack slot, and yeah, that's very useful for sure. But it's really important to see that this spell doesn't melt armor or enhance any appendages. So let's say if I'm wearing already uh, armory slots which prevent me from getting claws or horns and stuff, I'm not gonna get anything. And yeah, that's basically the idea. As a transmuter, I want to put down the manual training, of course, first, and I'm gonna stay like that. Unarmed combat will be my bread and butter across the game, because uh, all these extra attacks scale off with unarmed combat, which is certainly very useful. All right, there is a first two kobolds, and I want to <clears throat> step around this corner here, put up the beastly appendage, and there we go. All right, since this spell is on a macro. I felt like I want to do some explaining on macros because this is a spellcaster and I always been talking about I'm gonna explain macros at some point. So you're gonna bring up the macro menu with the tilde key which looks like that. Uh, you have, you're gonna have it on your keyboard. So let's hit it and we're having this menu here. I can do some macro with it and then it's gonna ask me which key I want to trigger the macro with. In my case that's this uh, button 1. And the current action displayed is going to be ZA1, which uh, dot, which means uh, the macro will do press the letter Z, the letter A, and then the dot for me. That's basically what this macro does. But since I don't want to wait a turn when I cast the beastly appendage, I gotta redefine this macro. 
So this uh, action is necessary if your uh, spell on A is a targeted damage spell because you open up the spell casting menu with a Z, you pick up, you choose the spell A, and then you get a prompted which uh, target you want to take, and that's what dot is for. But in this scenario, if you're playing some spell like Beastly Appendage, you're gonna bring up the spell menu, cast the spell, and then wait a turn. That's actually nothing I want to do. So let's redefine this to just plain Z A, push enter, and that's basically what macroing does. You can put down some series of uh, orders, commands to be more accessible. So I have like on the letter uh, Y here, uh, the swap over to armory uh, between weapons because I'm playing on the German keyboard setup and that means this button is a bit inaccessible for me if I want to swap out weaponry quick and that's why I put it in this letter which is vice versa if you're playing on an American keyboard you would have preferred some other button but for me it's perfect. So that's the basics about macroing. I have here on the button 2 the macro for ZB, on the button 3, ZC, and so on. So that's basically very, very useful if you want to avoid casting these spells every time manually. And yeah, let's get going. That's the basics of macroing. There's certainly a lot more you can do with that, but with these basics you can uh, reduce the tediousness of spellcasters a lot. And here we are, right in front of a huge mass of enemies and I want to kite back into a narrow point and actually whoa that's certainly some hot fight I don't want to drop the beastly appendage at this point we're chunking through these pretty easily and took no damage that's the AC bonus the scales provide that's way better than starting off with a rope actually all right there's some poison beetles I'm gonna pick these up for the time being because a blowgun would certainly help us a lot and now I'm gonna strategize a bit into the being of a transmuter. Uh, let's put it into a simple sentence. A transmuter has no safe early game. It's one of the harshest and most brutal early games uh, a background can provide because transmuters are very strong in the course of the game and especially once you pick up statue form your performance absolutely goes crazy. But until then, you're pretty vulnerable. Like, look at this ooze chunking me up. And yeah, you need skill levels to uh, develop your <clears throat> deadliness as a transmuter. And that's basically why the early game is especially rough. And I can't fight without a spell up. But on the other hand, I'm a bit better off than other spellcasters at this point. But I have to melee all the time. And with memorized now the sticks to snakes which is one of the most useful uh, spells in the early array of a transmuter it basically transforms some arrows in my inventory into snakes and that's a very cheap summoning spell and if you look we're having a decent chance to uh, properly cast it and it's also pure transmutation which means we don't need to uh, bring up any other stool and just go up with that spell, which is certainly very nice. Alright, let's bring this up. We summon the ball python, and we're, I'm gonna let this thing soften up this dude a bit. But the python didn't do too much. Alright, keep in mind that you always need one arrow per snake. And uh, if I'm out of arrows, the spell is absolutely useful, uh, useless. That's one hard drawback of this spell. Yet still, I feel like uh, this this spell brought me through so many difficult situations in the early game of a transmuter. So I can strongly re recommend to rely on this spell as much as you can, since it covers up a lot of your weaknesses. You don't need it too much for D1, since on D1 there's most likely nothing too dangerous to appear. But if you're running into some enemy which features a very dangerous branded weapon on D1, which can happen, uh, the spell can certainly save your bacon. So, yeah, that's the basic early game strategizing of a transmuter. I'm pushing towards uh, XL3 here because that's going to be the point where I'm able to pick up my next spell, I think. Let's chunk through, my, 
Should, uh, let's try to clear some enemies here. That's certainly no big deal. And we found a ring. But would that remove curse scrolls? I won't use that. That's that has grown to a habit here. If you're up for a while, it's this game is not long. I can't restart. It's not much loss. And yeah, put it on. But it can certainly ruin your day. All right, level three. We're picking up the intelligence here because I really need more intelligence. That's way not enough intelligence to start out. And our scales grew stronger on level three. We're already at AC plus five now. And that's certainly really good because when we have a look at this leather armor, it's only providing three AC. So basically we're sitting at the equivalent of a ring mail, I think. Let's have a check. Let's, let's check ring mail. Yeah, five AC. So we're having this five AC without the encumbrance and we can spell cast as much as we want to. That's basically very big plus side on the draconian even though it looks like a drawback and since i picked up level three i'm able to learn spider form and that's one very very important spell for the early game and for now i'm going to drop on her on a combat for a bit to focus on poison magic i want to have poison in three as fast as possible to have this uh, spider form castable as quick as possible but the bad thing about this is uh, if I level up <clears throat> six different skills at once, it's gonna be even worse. Five skills at once is bad enough. So the early game of a, of a hybrid is always a bit tough since you have to level so many different things. You can't focus entirely on combat or spellcasting as other builds can. And that's a challenge. Gotta admit that's a challenge. <coughs> Well, excuse me. So we found a bunch of arrows, which certainly uh, calms me down a bit. That means I can spam down my summons as hard as I want to. And that's something I really want to bring up. Because there's the chance of adders down here. And I don't want to fight adders alone head on right now without having a curing potion. Because I can't have save myself from the lethal poisoning that might occur all right but so far stuff is going pretty well but we didn't run into anything ugly yet that's actually a very uh, happy start here um not picking up any weaponry because i certainly do more damage right now with just the beastly appendage i think if i'm gonna run into some really good branded weapon early on i might use that for a while since it beats the uh unarmed combat in the early game if you're not having enough sp skill points into that it's certainly better to swap over to some powerful branded weapon like poison or electrocution or something very useful like that I'm not auto exploring here because I feel like I don't want to stumble unprepared into anything too ugly here. Since as a transmuter you can die early on very easily, there's a first adder, so I'm gonna drop down these snakes and order them to attack the adder, which sleeps, and I'm gonna put up the appendage and well, wasn't necessary, so these snakes took down the adder for me. And they certainly chunk down these uh, kobolds and everything too. And that's only two snakes clearing up this fight that well. And I think the situation showed off the value of sticks to snake a lot. If you want to rely on that if you're a transmuter. So there are some sling bullets. That would be a nice option as well to pick up some sling along the way. But I haven't found one yet, so I'm not picking these up. The sling is a very, very effective early game weapon. Strongly recommended for every weak start. Puts up a lot of safety even if you don't learn it at all. But I, I keep repeating that on all my episode 1 videos, how important uh, hunting slings can be. So I think if you're watching my videos a bit, you're getting the idea by now. But if this is your first video, well... That's why I'm explaining it again and again. Alright, looks like T2 was very, very uh, tender with us in terms of danger. No bad uniques, only one adder is the peak of danger down here, so 
certainly grateful for that. Let's put up the appendage and jump through these dudes. And poison matching is slowly getting there. And on this level I want to try out my uh, scrolls, ancient weapon, which went into nothing. I found this cloak. Let's put it up and enchant it before. ID scroll, very fine. Okay. That's a fear scroll, and that's a remove curse scroll. Awesome. Alright, so have a look at this. That's why you don't want to randomly equip uh, rings. So no, I didn't want to drop the chunk of flesh, I wanted to drop the ring of strength. Alright, I'm gonna ID the rest of these potions. Heal wounds. Degen. Well, nobody wants degen. <coughs> Let's drop that. Alright. But having some heal wounds, some haste, is certainly some good startup. And I'm sitting at AC7 now, which is good for a D3, but, well, not enough to rest upon it. And I'm having a look on my spider form. It's a 32% paler chance, but it's not yellow, which means I have no risk of getting evil and bad miscast uh, effects if I fail to, to cast it. And that is very, very nice. It's very, very nice. That means if anything too awkwardly shows up, I can try to bring up the spider form. And I'm going to explain why spider form is so great once I hit it and put it up. And there's a quarter staff. Well, quarter staffs are very good weapons for uh, starting out characters since they have an insane high base damage. But I'm up for unarmed combat here. Scrolls start piling up. And let's. Do some careful auto exploring in this corner. I felt safe there. And we blundered into a teleport trap, but obviously nothing too bad happened. I really gotta say there have to be some more enemies along the way because if this all gets so keeps being so easy, I uh, will lack some experience levels once I hit the more dangerous parts. And we have this adder now between my own adder and my, and myself. And that's a very good spot to take these down. Uh, right now I use the sticks to snakes whenever I run into some snakes. And that's some situation. So summon another snake and put up the appendage and go like that. Okay. Luckily the other adder didn't notice me. It would have been a lot harder if I had to fight against two of these. I'm just gonna keep standing here and order my adder to attack the adder. What an inception. And uh, there we go. And so these snakes uh, pound down dangerous stuff pretty easily. And once your transformations level is high, high enough, you will uh, get more snakes with one spell cast. And you will eventually uh, get water moccasins, which are um, in the early game really brutal. They're very, very helpful summons for early game. And right now I'm putting up the, the appendage pretty much every fight. And at 1.2 poison magic, spider form is getting more and more castable. And I really want to rush into this spell because it's so important for a transmuter. So if you're only getting a ball python, that's also uh, decent because at some point the python will use its constriction attack and that's guaranteed damage no matter how evasive your enemy is. That's really something to take into account. The python is very squishy, it dies very fast, but yeah, we're on d4 and there's two orcs closing in. I'm gonna put up some snake here, grow some appendage, and this dude drains me. I don't want to get drained here. So what I'm gonna do is kiting and let the snakes do the work, because I can get horribly drained by these attacks. And right now I'm pretty vulnerable to draining because my skill levels are very low and losing a few skill points well, look at that, I'm at the same point where I was before. So, it's actually something I don't want to see happen too much here. Alright, so, we're getting forward here, but I'm certainly pr pretty lucky so far. Uh, this was a very uh, easy run. And we ID the scroll, which was a scroll of blinking, and there's a first worker ant. And this is gonna be the fight where I'm putting up the spider form. And as a spider, you get tiny, which uh, gives you an insane amount of invasion rating, and you also get vulnerable to poison. 
that's something you have to take care about which is kind of like not optimal facing a worker amp but with this evasion I can hit it down pretty easily and also keep in mind while transformed your spellcasting failures get worse so if you have to put up spells you really want to do that before you transform that's one thing you really got to keep in mind as a transmuter because it's a bit uh, weird to do so so let's have a check or no normal evasion right now is only 12 in spider that's 20 it's, uh, eight points of uh, evasion rating we get out of one spell and we get some poison attack that's really one spell you will you want to rely on as a uh, transmuter early on all right so the first three spells in the transmuter spell book uh, are bringing up everything you need to survive the early game of the of crawl pretty much yeah okay i want to get rid of the drain as quick as possible that certainly bugs me a bit so let's chunk down this ooze and there's a glowing long sword i want to pick it up I don't carry around any remove, remove curse scrolls right now, but maybe this sword is awesome. Maybe it's some really good brand, but I don't know yet. It could be also cursed horribly, and I don't want to be hanging around with that. An amulet, nice. Let's keep it for later. A skeleton. Luckily, adder skeletons aren't poisonous. That's certainly something nice. And as you might notice, I uh, really try to auto-explore as little as possible while on a transmuter in the early game because I really want to uh, decide myself where I go and where I don't go. You can get splatted pretty easily at this point of the game if you run into something ugly. And there is an adder. Let's drop some snakes and kill it. Alright, there we go. Poison magic went to a base level of 2, we're slowly getting there. And there's another orc, which has a hand axe of flaming. Alright. A centaur skeleton. I think I want to put up some snakes here. Alright. The ball python didn't last too long. And this hand axe of flaming sure hurt like hell. I want to pick it up. Because I feel like this should be a safe option to take. Since I already knew the brand, I wasn't as reluctant to pick it up as with the long sword. Because even if it was cursed to say minus two or something, there's still some flaming brand on it, and it's at this point my unarmed combat doesn't do more damage than that. I'm absolutely sure that it wouldn't do that. So next and I'm trying to get into spider, which doesn't work out at all. So we're gonna do some axe work here carefully because I don't have curing potions on me. And these ants, as you can notice, that's what happens if you're not into spider form against these. So I wasted all my mana so I had no uh, mana left for a beastly appendage there. Oops. But I put it up as soon as I could and everything went fine. But it's a good way to show off the difference between fighting it in spider form and fighting it without spider form even if i am getting vulnerable to poison the insane evasion bonus certainly carries you through these and there's another adder let's drop a python for that and try to hack it down which doesn't go too easy <laughs> but i'm having no skills and access at all so I'm not gonna wield this axe too long actually. This is only something for in between Iguana and Adder. I really want to bring up uh, a spider on my own, uh, a snake on my own. I'm gonna turn into spider for this fight since Iguanas can pack quite a punch and I don't want to get mangled by these right now. Alright. There's a Howler Monkey. I think I can kill that with Appendage. They're pretty brawny for early game enemies. And there goes level 6. We get another point of AC through our scales, which brings us to AC 8 right now. I mean, that's not insane, but certainly not bad. 
considering that I have to wear no armor at all. <clears throat> and I'm not having to train armor to plus sites for hybrids. Alright, there's a ring of strength. I'm actually gonna keep it for some reasons. Because your damage as uh, a unarmed fighter <clears throat> is calculated by strength and dexterity. So strength rings are actually more useful for unarmed fighters than for other classes which mostly need the strength to cover up the armor encumbrance. Alright, there's another worker and so what I'm gonna do is drop down a snake and go into a spider. Uh, this time it worked out pretty decently. And there goes the end. Alright, we're almost at poison 3, which is very good. I really want to drop that uh, spell school and start leveling unarmed combat again because I certainly want to bring this up. And there is an adder. Let's check if I can. Yeah, appendage is enough right now. I'm having a decent bunch of, a decent amount of HP right now, so I'm not too afraid anymore of these. Also the hand axe is a very good uh, early on item for chopping down adders. Alright, there's a temple. And that's some tough decision making here. And as a transmuter I'm relying a lot on on, on combat and <clears throat> Many people like to go for Chai, since Chai will give you a insane amount of base stats. You get an insane boost to strength, intelligence and dexterity, and at that point uh, stuff will get pretty easy. Yet still you will lose movement speed. And actually I'm not too fond of that for this room, I'm not into that. So what I'm gonna do, I feel like doing something different, you know? We could go for Zom, that would be crazy. Alright. Ash could be some interesting uh, option. But for this run... Oh well. I might go for Ru. I feel like going for Ru. Ru is a very interesting god. He doesn't gain up piety with... Uh, Anything you're used to get piety for, Ru will always bring uh, will bring you at some point to the decision what you want to sacrifice, and depending how heavy your sacrifice is, you're uh, gonna get piety for that permanent piety that is. And those sacrifices are sure pretty hefty, but Ru doesn't force you to sacrifice anything. If you're not happy with the three sacrifices he's offering to you, you can reject them, and then you're gonna get a new set. But the skills of Ru are really powerful. As soon as you get some piety, these things get really, really uh, powerful. <clears throat> because the first two skills are absolutely uh, passive and work all the way without you doing anything. And this leap is also pretty useful. And as you can see, these skills all cost no piety, which means the only thing you're going to be careful about is the skill drain. And exhaustion only means that you're not able to use this kind of skills again. That's all what exhaustion brings. It doesn't debuff your combat by your combat skills or your performance or anything like that. I was always afraid that exhaustion means I would fight worse or such, but then I looked it up and realized nope. It doesn't. Alright, so we open up this door and get instantly smited by this orc. That's certainly an awkward situation. So what I'm going to do is drop down a snake and let the snake uh, keep this uh, priest busy. And I'm going to continue like that because I want to uh, try to um, avoid getting smited and I hope this priest will rather smite my snakes instead of me. And yeah, let's, let's go into spider and finish this up. And sadly this guy is going for a crazy smite party here and I have to co-op one of my potions of field wounds. Sadly. I was hoping this would work out but no. His god gave him a lot of power of smiting. 
but this worked out pretty well. Man, I've also got another potion of heal wounds at the meteorites. Alright. Work around and a crimson imp. Hmm. I'm gonna kite this back a bit. Looks like uh, the situation here is getting a bit more dangerous than it was before. I was swapping over to spider form again to bring down the worker ant. And the poison match is done. So we're gonna swap over to unarmed combat now and focus that a bit more. Uh, let's rest up here. So spider form is now at a failure rating of 13%. That's okay. The rest will come through uh, the increasing of transmutations. And that's everything I need. So for this Crimson Imp, I want to bring up as many Pythons as I can, because Imps have a very, very low hit point pool. And the constriction of a Ball Python <laughs> really messes them up. It's very funny how easy you can take down uh, Imps just with a Ball Python. All right, there's the first Hound, but I'm not too afraid of that. And we're getting into Iron Grey, or a Grey a Draconium. That's certainly something interesting, and I really love to have it. Uh, the special trait of a Grey Draconian is that you're getting a lot more armor class than other Draconians, and you can walk through water, and you don't need to breathe anymore. Uh, but that also means I don't get any breath attack, which all Draconians usually get. That's the drawback. But I can live with that drawback. And I also got a plus two aptitude to earth magic. And since I want to pick up uh, statue form uh, sooner or later as a uh, transmuter, that's actually awesome. And I want to bring up the spider form. And maybe I want to escape. Yeah, I want to escape and heal up. So the spider form here protects me from the nets of these gnolls a bit more than just running away since I'm having a good time evading these. Alright, let's get into this. Let's go, go into spider form and chunk down these and all. And as you might notice, these guys having real trouble to hit me by now. And let's pick up these nets. Throwing nets are sure pretty useful. And we're finding a new bunch of uh, removed curse scrolls, so we can put up this minus six ring of strength. Ow. And we have a long sword of draining. Alright, that's gonna replace the hand axe. It's certainly not too much damage, but it's way more base damage than my uh, hand axe can provide. And actually, I'm not too unhappy about draining. Draining is certainly some useful stat. So let's remove curse and get rid of this ugly ring of strength. And we also found a, an amulet of curse of rage, but. Oh uh, well. We're gonna keep it for now. Alright, we're running into a scorpion and some skeleton. I will swap over into spider. I feel a lot safer in spider form, gotta admit. And right now I could learn also ice form or blade hands. But, well, ice form. Ice form is one of these spells. I more often than not uh, reluct I'm reluctant to pick it up. But it is a good spell. It's basically kind of like spider form, but with less evasion and more damage. And it also increases your cold resistance by a lot, but also makes you vulnerable to fire. That's that's the gist of it. So there is a hunting sling. Hmm. I feel like it's a bit late for picking up a hunting sling here. That's certainly not too true here, but. Yeah, let's do it without a sling this time. Alright. I'm waiting for Rue to uh, offer me my first sacrifice, and I'm certainly pretty curious what it's gonna be. Alright, there is another priest situation. I'm gonna swap over into Spider and chunk down this priest, and hopefully get not smited too much. So this time the priest didn't want to smite. Alright. That's the normal situation with the Orc Priest. The last one was absolutely crazy. I think he had a lot of piety going on. 
All right, we ran into a teleport trap. But that's nothing too spooky. And there's a centaur. This is a very bad spot to fight a centaur. There's very much space left for him to chunk me down. So I'm gonna bring up some snakes to help me across. And look at that. 40 points of damage. I knew this would hurt much. So, yeah. Thanks, teleport trap. <laughs> Alright, another worker and let's chunk it down. There goes some orc. Alright. Not a single unique so far. That that my 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 stomach is telling me that we're meeting some nasty unique pretty soon. And I haven't stumbled into a single one so far. Certainly a sad thing. And let's ID these scrolls. That's a scroll of magic mapping and a scroll of fog. Not a single scroll of teleportation inside. So I found a new trident, which turns out to be an anti-magic trident. That's absolutely not interesting if you're into spell casting, because I had only four uh, maximum spell points left. So in the early game, wielding an anti-magic weapon as a magic user is uh, cutting down your uh, spell point pool too hard to actually be able to use that. That's my five cents to about that. First, Mokassin. These dudes are uh, absolutely poison immune, so um, the spider form won't help me too much here. Instead, I'm trying to net this, which doesn't work. Well, let's go into uh, Snake Storm, and I'm still gonna go into Spider because of the evasion bonus. Because I got in a huge amount of poison on me. That's the downside of the spider form. Well, I'm not too sure if I should try to bring down the Mokassins without spider form. I think that would be actually more smart. I think I misplayed that right here. Good. The vulnerability to poison kicks in pretty hard if you're facing an enemy which is actually able to hit you pretty hard, like the Mokassins are at this point of the game. Alright. Okay, this, this is looking like some uh, easy fight here, some jackal, some adder. Okay, another hound. And this longsword proves to be useful even though I'm not training uh, long blades at all. And there is a bunch of null. Okay, I poisoned this uh, sergeant hard enough to bring him down, but for now I want to fall back a bit. I feel like this is a bit too dangerous to take it on heads up. And let's get into spider again find it right here. Right now I was a bit braver because I was in an area that which I uh, already completely explored. And down here I don't know if anything here or here might get attracted by the noise this fight will make and that's why I wanted to back out. Because if there would be any nasty uh, thing joining into this fight the situation would become very very dangerous. And we finally found our first potion of curing. Ain't that nice? All right, we chunk down this iguana. I'm finding a lot of potions of haste here. So there's another mocassin. Let's let's do this uh, different this time. I'm gonna put up the appendage this time. Yeah, that worked out way better. So while one of the challenges as a transmuter is to bring the right tool to the right situation, to put it like that. And Rue gives me some chance to sacrifice. Alright, what can we sacrifice? We can sacrifice purity, which will drop our intelligence by two. And our piety wouldn't get a single pit from that. Alright, we can sacrifice stealth. Alright, uh, this means I won't uh, be able to skill up uh, stealth at any point of the game. And we're gonna, we can also sacrifice courage. And yeah, that's actually a hard one. Now, I think for this run, I'm gonna sacrifice uh, stealth, since I feel like that won't hit me too hard here. But it was only a first step on my journey of being a 
pious follower of Ru, so we didn't get anything from that. I would have gotten the first skill here if I chose to uh, sacrifice my courage, but I felt like that's a big thing to do. Getting debuffed every time you're facing something dangerous. You know, don't feel like that. I certainly think summoners can pick up this trade pretty uh, risk-free, in my opinion because they rely on other stuff to do the killing but for me, um, well, I'm all hands on and thus I don't want to take this so I'm not fire resistant enough to go through this I would get horribly burned if I try to cross this area it's a bit sad let's, let's put an annotation fire vault treasures and if we're control O, I can put it up later. And if I have enough fire resistance, I don't want to have a check. I mean, it's nothing too special there. But it's an easy pickup I would like to do, but it's not worth pick, uh, blasting a scroll of blinking into that. That would be an absolute waste, in my opinion. So I'm not doing that. Because I would need to blink out too. And there's Blork. I knew something terrible would cross my way at some point. So Blork doesn't have too many hit points, but he has some destructive magic and the ability to go in this. Okay, and his uh, cold spell certainly scares me a bit. So what I'm gonna do is sip in this potion of agility and go into spider and hopefully we're able to melt him down here. With the extra potion of agility his chances of uh, hitting his spells on me are very low and if he would have went into this I just uh, would have popped my uh, wand of lightning into him until he's dead. That was basically the idea and I think that was certainly working well here. Alright, finally a scroll of teleportation and I think I'm gonna wrap this episode up at this point where making our descent here. Usually I play an episode one until I hit the lair, but somehow I feel like taking a little break here before I go deeper. This is good looking here. We're getting somewhere, although we're lacking a lot of things, but I feel pretty confident along the way. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for your time and attention and I hope we're gonna see you in the next episode. Leave me some comment or some thumbs if you like. I always love to see some feedback and until then, enjoy your time and see you again soon. Bye-bye.